Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. The bold and the beautiful recap for June 13, 2024. Finn makes a house call. Hope asks Finn to make a house call in the bold and the beautiful recap for June 12, 2024. We begin today at Hope's and Ika Noel cabin, where book Catherine Kelly Lang asks about Beth, who is homesick. Hope says Beth didn't sleep well, and Brooke knows that Hope didn't sleep well, either. Brooke says that they didn't get to finish their conversation, and she wants to know about Hope's feelings for Finn, Tanner Novlin. Hope doesn't think Steffi, Jacqueline Missins would, appreciates Finn the way he deserves and she doesn't think Finn is happy with Steffi. Steffi is getting ready to leave when she thinks back to the day at the office finding Finn and Hope. Finn walks up and says he has a free morning and he'd like to spend it with his sexy wife. She has meetings but she does want to clarify their conversation about Hope. Carter, Lawrence St. Victor, and Ridge, Thorsten K., wrap up a meeting and Ridge says he'd like to talk with Hope about the line. Carter says that Ridge is all fired up and is acting more like a CEO and not a designer. Ridge says he still wants to move away from the job but he has a particular caveat. Ridge explains that he doesn't want all of the work to fall on Steffi, so he's thinking of bringing in someone who has done the job before. Carter guesses it's Brooke, but Ridge says she turned him down. He's still trying though. Steffi says that Finn is a caring guy. Finn asks if she thinks Hope is trying to manipulate him, and Steffi says that she has done it with Thomas and Liam. Finn understands where she's coming from. Brooke thinks it's great that Hope can open up to Finn, but she can't go after Steffi's husband. There are kids involved and Brooke doesn't want things to get out of hand. She warns Hope to be careful as she leaves, promising to come back and check on Beth later. Once she's gone, Hope breathes a sigh of relief. Beth wakes up and says she feels worse. Hope says she needs to go to the doctor, but Beth doesn't feel good enough to go. Because of course she doesn't. Hope bundles Beth up on the couch as she calls the doctor's office. They can't see her until the next day, but Hope has an idea. She calls Finn and runs all of Beth's symptoms by him and asks if she should go to urgent care, but he insists on coming over to help. Ridge says he put the cart before the horse with his idea. Carter teases him about not checking with Steffi first, but Ridge thinks they would just work through it and do what's best for the company. Brooke walks in and Carter jokes with her about bailing on Ridge's offer. Ridge admits he hasn't gotten over the idea. Steffi walks in asking why Brooke is there. Finn arrives and checks on Beth, who definitely has the flu. He tells her he has some medicine to help her feel better soon. He gives her a shot and she doesn't even feel it. Hope thanks him as he offers Beth a choice of band-aids. Ridge tells Steffi that he asked Brooke to join him there. Ridge says he wants to capitalize on Brooke's contributions to the company again. Highlight Brooke's line and do a photo shoot that puts her front and center. He wants to get back to when Brooke was doing the lingerie line, and he reveals a photo of Brooke in her red lingerie on a bed for a photo shoot. Brooke points out that she's a grandmother now, but Carter says she's not like any grandmother he knows. Ridge says it's time for Brooke to step out of the shadows and get in front of the camera to make the bedroom line hers again. Hope says Beth's fever is going down and Finn says she's on the road to recovery. Hope suggests that Beth gets some sleep, so Finn offers to carry her to bed. As Beth thanks him, Hope pines away after the man she can't have. Ridge tells Brooke that she wanted to have a bigger role in the company, and this is a great way to do it. Carter says that Ridge has put a lot of thought into this, and Ridge says he's planned so many things. He even has a retrospective of her best moments at Forrester, which he plays for them. Carter smiles as Steffi rolls her eyes. Magic, that's what you bring to the bedroom line, Ridge says. He says she has so much more to give to the fashion world. Brooke still has questions about how it's all going to work, but she agrees to do it. Ridge is thrilled, but Steffi is less than thrilled. Hope says she's going to check on Beth, but she made tea for Finn. Finn sighs as she leaves the room. After Ridge and Carter leave, Steffi asks if Brooke is going to leave. 
Burke knows that Steffi isn't thrilled about the whole idea. Steffi is more concerned about Finn and Hope. Hope thanks Finn over and over again. She's grateful that he made her feel so much better. It reminds her how he's such an incredible man. She looks at him with heated passion in her eyes while he looks on merrily. The sun rose over Los Angeles, casting its golden light on the sprawling estates and bustling streets of the city. At the cliffside mansion of the Foresters, the day was set to unfold with drama, romance, and unexpected twists that could only be found in the world of the bold and the beautiful. The episode began with Steffi Forrester, the fierce and independent matriarch of the Forrester clan, standing on her terrace, gazing out at the ocean. Her thoughts were a whirlwind of emotions as she pondered the events of the past few weeks. Her relationship with Finn, the dashing and dedicated doctor, had hit turbulent waters. Misunderstandings and secrets had driven a wedge between them, and Steffi found herself yearning for the days when their love was unshakable. In the heart of Los Angeles, Dr. John Finnegan, known to everyone as Finn, was busy at the hospital. His mind, however, was not on his patients but on Steffi. He had spent countless hours trying to piece together the puzzle of their strained relationship. Determined to make things right, Finn decided that today would be the day he took matters into his own hands. Meanwhile, at Forrester Creations, a family-owned fashion house, tensions were running high. Ridge Forrester, the patriarch and creative genius behind the brand, was in the midst of a heated argument with his son Thomas. The two were clashing over the direction of the new collection. Thomas, passionate and innovative, wanted to push boundaries, while Ridge, experienced and cautious, believed in sticking to the brand's roots. The argument was fierce and neither was willing to back down. As the day progressed, Sefi tried to distract herself by diving into work. She had always found solace in her responsibilities at Forrester Creations. Yet no matter how much she buried herself in designs and business meetings, her thoughts kept drifting back to Finn. The love they shared was undeniable, but the barriers between them seemed insurmountable. In another part of town, Hope Logan was dealing with her own set of challenges. Her marriage to Liam had been on shaky ground ever since he confessed to a moment of weakness with Steffi. Though they had been trying to rebuild their relationship, trust was a fragile thing. Hope found herself questioning every word and every action, unsure if she could ever truly forgive and forget. Back at the hospital, Finn was finishing his shift when he made a decision that would change everything. He grabbed his coat and headed to his car, determined to see Steffi. He knew that words alone would not be enough. He needed to show her how much she meant to him. With a heart full of hope and resolve, Finn drove to the Forrester mansion. Steffi was in the middle of a phone call when she heard the doorbell ring. Surprised, she walked to the door and opened it to find Finn standing there, a look of determination on his face. For a moment, they simply stared at each other, the air between them thick with unspoken words. Finn, Steffi finally said, her voice a mix of surprise and uncertainty. Steffi, we need to talk, Finn replied, his voice steady but filled with emotion. I can't stand the distance between us anymore. Steffi stepped aside to let him in her heart racing. She had been longing for this moment, yet she was afraid of what it might bring. They walked into the living room, the silence between them almost unbearable. I know things have been difficult, Finn began, but I need you to understand that everything I'd done was to protect us. To protect our family. Steffi looked at him, her eyes filled with tears. Finn, I want to believe you, but it's hard. There have been so many secrets, so many lies. I know, Finn said, his voice breaking, but I promise you no more secrets. I love you, Steffi. I love our family. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. Steffi felt a glimmer of hope as she listened to his words. She wanted to believe him, to trust in their love. But the pain of the past was still fresh in her mind. Finn, it's not that simple. Trust takes time to rebuild. I understand, Finn said softly. But I'm here now, and I'm not going anywhere. I want us to work through this together. As they talked, the walls between them began to crumble. 
They opened up about their fears, their hopes, and their dreams. For the first time in weeks, Steffi felt a sense of relief. Maybe, just maybe, they could find their way back to each other. Meanwhile, at Forrester Creations, the tension between Ridge and Thomas had reached a boiling point. Brooke, ever the peacemaker, stepped in to try and calm the situation. Ridge, Thomas, you both want what's best for the company. Can't we find a compromise? Thomas, his passion still burning bright, looked at his father. Dad, I just want to take Forrester Creations to new heights. We can't stay stuck in the past.